you will recall volumes. We took apart the idea of, you don't need to write this down, but we took apart the idea of, uh, let's do it this way. We took apart this idea of just finding the volume of a solid of revolution, and we saw with two unit techniques, right? Like, it's, it's kind of really beautiful how compact and um, succinct this little thing is, and how powerful it is, you know? Um, you can get some weird and wonderful shapes out of this. However, mathematicians always trying to push the boundaries and also trying to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into what the true nature of these kinds of things are. So you might have remembered that what we did was saying, look, this integral, right, it actually kind of skips a step. It kind of takes out, it sort of disguises, it veils something that's happening before. Where does this come from? Where does the integral come from? I'll give you a tip. It starts with this. Okay, so in this particular case, in this particular case, I've just got that. We saw, okay, so this is a bunch of infinitesimally thin cylinders, okay? We, we developed, like, the fundamental theorem of, um, of calculus gets us to this mechanism where integration gives us this result. But then we said, well, why just cylinders? Why just cylinders? Um, we introduced the idea of an annular slice. It's like, look, this slice here can be a cylinder, but it can be anything you like, right? Then we saw just that subtle twist um, in the perspective on our questions. It opened up a whole bunch of different kinds of things for us. We didn't anymore have to rotate around a coordinate axis like the x-axis or the y-axis. I could take that line somewhere else, right? And that is exactly what we're going to do here. Last time we took a coordinate axis, we just moved it. We shifted it, right? So that was cool. But this is going to pale. It's gonna, that's going to pale in comparison to this. Here is a... What's that green shape called again? Starts with an S. It's a segment. Segment. The sector would be the, that whole thing, which in this case would be a quadrant. This is a segment. So I want to form a volume by rotating this segment. We can rotate this around a whole bunch of different ways. But I'm going to be a little interesting and say, what if I take the chord that subtends this segment and make that? my axis of rotation, okay? Now, at this point, two unit U is just like, <laughs> flip the table and go home, okay? Because we don't have anything really to deal with this. Um, you'd have to do some pretty dramatic twisting around. You'd actually literally have to rotate this um, in, in order that this line, which is oblique, I'm gonna call this an oblique axis of rotation, uh, in order to make that horizontal or vertical. And then you could try something like this, okay? But can we deal with it the way it is? Well. For starters, let's get a picture of what this volume is going to be like. Got this guy, right? You spin the lathe and you're getting a shape which will be symmetrical about this line. By the way, what is the equation of this chord? Uh, y equals y minus 2 minus 1 minus, 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 minus x. Because this is the unit circle, right? This is 1 and 1. The gradient of this line is negative 1. So it's just 1 take away x, okay? So, I'm spinning around y equals 1, take away x. So I should be, as I look at this, at this 2D representation, I should be, uh, I should have line symmetry around that line. Yeah? So let's reflect across and get something like that. Okay? It's a bit thin on the side. But you get the idea? And just for effect, right, I'm going to put some, um, some spinning lines here. So you're like, okay, yeah, it's a pointy football. Cool. That's what my volume is going to look like. Where am I going to slice this? Now, we actually have some serious choices here, but so far, everything we've been doing in terms of like thinking back to what we looked at before in 2 unit is to <coughs> slice in which direction? What, what way am I going to go here? Yeah. 45 degrees. 45 degrees to what? Um, to the coordinate axis. 45 degrees which way and to which coordinate axis? Um, 45 degrees to the origin. 
So let's just pause for a second, right? You guys know how fixated I am on language, right? And on terminology, and this is why. Because when you don't have powerful language, you're just kind of like, you know, the line with the thing and the guy with the stuff. And you, you have no way to specify, right? GC, do you want to have another shot? You cut it on the direction where it's being rotated. Do you mean that way? Because no, that's it's the it's direction. Like rotating this way, right? It's rotating this way. Yeah. yeah. So you cut it. That Wait, hang on. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> let me again. So this is justifying why language is awesome, right? Let me give you the way that I'll describe this. I am going to slice across this volume on a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. That's all you need to say. Perpendicular to. The axis of rotation, right? If you want to go with angles and that kind of thing, I guess you would say 45 degrees anti-clockwise, we're extension two students, so we know anti-clockwise is actually the normal direction of rotation, not clockwise, and all the physics students know that too. I'm gonna to go 45 degrees, or I should really say pi on four, anti-clockwise from the x-axis. That would do it too. Now let's draw one of the slices. Draw one of the slices. This is a football, right? Unlike when we're looking at annular slices, you're not going to get any holes in this slice, right? So just draw one in for me. Okay, there's my slice. So, being that actually in this case, you're just going to get a cylinder. You're just going to get a cylinder. You only need to know two pieces of information to work out what the volume of a cylinder is, right? What are the two pieces? <coughs> Um, you're going to need to know a radius and a height. That's all you need. Okay. Now, let's have a look at the radius first. So I'm going to draw this in over here. Here's my um, radius. I'm just going to call it little r because I don't have a big r. Okay. How am I going to work that out? Where does that come from? Yeah. Okay, very good. I have this line over here, right? This is a straight line. And this distance everywhere along is the distance from that straight line to some point on this arc, yes? So I'm gonna to have to work that out later on. Fine, I'm just gonna pile that away in my head. Then I think about the height. And that's this guy, okay? Now in the past, we've been saying, ah, oh, delta x if you're going this way, and delta y if you're going this way. But you are going neither of those directions. You're actually going some combination of those, okay? So there's lots of different ways I could articulate this. But for me, because it's a height, right? and it's neither x nor y, I'm just gonna call it its own thing. I'm gonna call it delta h. Okay? So this is a new variable I'm introducing. And I'm going to somehow have to convert from this into the familiar old x and y's because eventually I'm gonna do some integral, right? So eventually I'll get there. Now the question then becomes, okay, like this is the substance of the question. How do I find out what r is? How do I find out what delta h is? Okay, so let's start with the easy one. Let's do R, okay? Um, we don't need a new diagram for R. Everything we need is on here. Let's define a point. Um, this is our particular um, our particular slice that we've chosen. So being that it's on the circumference, I'm going to call this like A. Okay? And it's on the circumference, like that. It just has some arbitrary coordinates. I will take advantage of the fact that it's on the unit circle a little bit later on. But if it's some arbitrary x, y, then how do I work out the distance along here, this distance here, from A <coughs> to this line? Very good. So I'm going to write this as, and again, I need some more labels. So I'm going to call this chord PQ. Right? Uh, this radius that I'm after, what it really is, is the distance from PQ, that's the line, to A. That's not very sophisticated. Um, uh, notation, now I could write it other ways, but I think it's unambiguous what I'm trying to get at. Okay? Um, perpendicular distance, in order to use the perpendicular distance formula, I need this guy, but I need it slightly differently, right? How am I going to rewrite this? AX plus BY plus C equals zero. There's my general form. So now I'm ready to actually put this into the perpendicular distance formula. What is the perpendicular distance formula again? It's, yeah, it's a x1 plus b y1 plus c. So conveniently for me, because the x and y that I'm going to are x and y, I just have this on my numerator, okay? 
What about my denominator? Cool. So now, I have a radius. I have a radius. Cool. Uh, it does look a bit icky at the moment, especially with that square root on the bottom and that absolute value. <coughs> but don't forget, what am I going to do with this radius when I start to work out the volume? Answer, I'm going to square. Okay, so I'm just going to leave that there for now. I will come back to it. Now let's deal with this delta H, okay? 